Slaying a princess is supposed to be easy, right? Hey, it's Gabe, and welcome back to Slay the Princess. Last time we were here, I soul bonded with my emo girlfriend and she cut off her hand for some reason. But who needs two hands when you're in love, right? If you don't know what this game is, you should watch the last video I made on it. This time we'll be exploring the new damsel route. She's a very dainty princess who has absolutely nothing to hide. Remember, if you enjoy the video, subscribe. If you don't, I will find where you live and tickle you. And in the basement of that cabin. Alright, shut the frick up, narrator. After blocking out the voice of the narrator, you do not grab the knife. You then head downstairs to chat with the princess. Just checking in on you. you. Are? It's been so long since anyone's come down here. I, I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. Of course not, my beloved. While talking with the princess, she gets a little bit hungry and has a bite of her arm. She barely hesitates oh, fuck. before Sorry. raising her arm. I down forgot her about mouth, that. Her teeth tearing oh, through her okay. limb with the determination <laughs> of a trapped wolf. Hmm, you gonna finish that? After the knife falls down the stairs, you can cut her free from the chain. Shut up, narrator. <sighs> Fine. Yeah, womp womp. Then use the power of love to say no as the narrator tries to control your body. After she stabs you to death, you arrive at chapter two. Okay, all right, damsel time. This time you're joined by the voice of the smitten. If only you knew what you did to us, you <laughs> villain. I love you, smitten. You make your way into the cabin. You gently free the princess from her shackles. Just don't stay and question her too long. After heading up the stairs, the door gets shut in your face. Uh, do you think you can open it? I think we can open it if we try together. I think I've got this. Open the door yourself. Uh, do you think you can open it? Well, I don't know. Do you think I can? Uh, but... Uh, of course she can. <laughs> you believe in her, right? Okay. Nobody is leaving this basement. Narrator, you're such a sour apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got this. That's crazy. Open the door yourself, bitch. Okay, let me try. The princess tries the handle. And... Lock clicks. And the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I told you she could do it. Woo! You and the princess make your way upstairs, and... The blade, that's right, there's still a chance for you to do the right thing. Take the blade from the table and slay her before it's too uh, late. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 yeah. You take the blade from the table. All we need to do... What if we just stay... Oh, wait, what? What if we just stayed here and built a life together? I think that's new. Hold on, I think that's new. What a romantic suggestion. You're right. We don't need the world. All we need is each other. <sighs> That's exactly what I just suggested. Was it not romantic when I suggested it? Did you suggest that? I wasn't listening. You answered me. But the door's right there. We can just leave. W wait. Why would she say that? Was she not wooed by our proclamation of love? Uh, we not enough fur? Mm. She's not wooed by you because this is staying here and building a life together isn't a solution. It isn't anything. It's a non-answer. It can't be done. This is something new. I think this is something new. Oh, but, but you're not sure about the world has been the word. It's not what you're saying. Trust me, I'll be better. Uh, you're right, we're leaving. No, we are not leaving. Yeah. You're nonchalant. You're nonchalant about the fate of the world had me a bit worried. That's why I wanted to stay or that's why I want to stay here. Yes. She is extremely nonchalant about oh, it, isn't she? <laughs> She's so Need I remind you that the blade is still here, sitting on the basement floor. Please. Everyone is counting on you. Uh, I think it's too late for that. Uh, yeah. But I... I... We would have to be here forever. Uh-huh. I don't know you. Oh. Oh, no. Is she... This is really what you want, though. Isn't it? Is she breaking up with me? Her eyes dart uncomfortably to the corners of the room. Oh, shit. I guess we could do that. She doesn't seem happy about this. But she can't be unhappy about staying with us, can she? No, she I cannot. Know. She has a point. She doesn't know us. No, 
It has to be him. It has to be this place. If we just made these walls more fitting for a princess. If we just say the right things. If we just showed her the contents um, of our heart. Um, she'd be happy. Uh, I don't like the way you're saying that, Smitten. As the voice thinks its thought, your hands raise, fingers pointing towards your chest. Oh, no. And then... Oh, no. Don't do that. No, you absolutely do not do that. Do not do that. Oh, but I do. Come on, goddammit, Smith. What? <laughs> what is he doing? We can't see unless you tell us. Are you sure you want to know? Uh, I suppose I can't stall forever. Oh. You plunge your nails into your chest, digging deep, grasping for a handhold. And you find it. Your fingers curling around your ribs. That is nasty. Oh no, what are you doing? Are you okay? You can't do that and be okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Time out. He should not be allowed to do that. He's not the decider. Facts. And yet, it's done, isn't it? Jeez, the smell is OP. It will be soon. Oh. You yank violently, your bones cracking with wet pops as you Pull yourself apart inch by painful inch. Why? Your exposed oh. heart, framed by oh. jagged ribs, thumps rhythmically oh, that's your raw, not... bloodied chest. Oh, that's not good. The loosened yeah. uh, threads of your body unfurling to cover the surface of the room. Ew! Don't mind my sacrifice. It's a fair price to pay to give her everything she doesn't know she wants. All right, Smin, you're getting a little bit creepy now. Oh, I see. You're trying to tell me something. The princess, mesmerized, reaches towards your beating heart and then... Everything goes dark and we die? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, epilogue. Happily ever after. You're on a path in the woods. Mate, we're clearly what? already in the cabin. Uh, Excuse me? You're clearly... Oh. Huh. So you are. How do you know about the cabin? I didn't get to the cabin part of my opening monologue yet. Um, We've been here before. Well, not um, here, here, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, you knew about the loop in last time. Now, um, now, he's clearly disorientated. Uh, uh, I'm sure all this new info is going to come as quite a shock to him. Best if we're gentle. What's the opportunist here again? Right on cue, here's the new guy. Welcome! Thank you, thank you. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> okay, yes, I get it. You've been here before. That's terrible. You know that, right? Because the only reason you would have been here before is if you failed in whatever world you'd come from. Meaning you doomed an entire other reality. But I'm sure since you're so well-traveled, you know that, yes? Mm. Well, we know that now, thanks to you. We're all so lucky to be stuck with... Uh, working with someone so well informed. You can count on us to do things right from here on out. That is absolutely correct. I'm going to describe the room now. The interior of the cabin is vast and regal. High arched windows line the walls, their multicolored glass casting kaleidoscopic patterns across the stone floor. An iron chandelier hangs from the vaulted ceiling, its many candles lit with flickering light vaguely illuminating the massive room. This is a house fit for royalty. I'm gonna for save. Oh my god, what is going on? What is going on? Oh, okay. Yeah, just look, there is just... Oh, there's no blade. Oh, that's not good. Well, look at the princesses on the thingy. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, where's the voice of the smitten? He was here last time. It's not like him to be this quiet. That's a good point. Is the voice of the smith like materialized now or something? Yeah. He was a bit oh, of a no. loud one, wasn't he? Oh boy, here we go. Is he okay? We're better off without him if you ask me. One less opinion we have to contend with. Plus, he's the one who got us into this whole mess. That is absolutely true. Is that so? 
Maybe there is hope for you after all, free from the bad influence of your missing friend. I like how I can still turn around and leave. Actually, I'm kind of curious. What happens if I turn around and leave? Um, actually, first I'm asking about this. Does it matter if the blade's here? We didn't use it last time in the time before she, that she... I cannot speak! Now that is some fine reasoning. Who cares about the blade? I think you're right. We're better off without it. It's not like it's ever been important. <sighs> of course the blade's important. It's your implement. You're going to need it if you want to do this right. Shut up. The fact that you're here Narrator. right now, again, means that you have not yet done this right. But it's not there, is it? We don't even get the choice. So, what are we supposed to do? I don't actually know. I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. It has to. It's part of the whole structure of this place, I think. At the very least, it's important. All right, well, you know what? I say, I say, screw this, I'm leaving. As you foolishly turn to leave the cabin and abandon the world to its ruination, you're... Oh, isn't that convenient? Uh, as you turn around, you're faced with a solid wall. There isn't a way out. It would appear that you're stuck here until you find a resolution to our princess problem. No. That is convenient. Look at us crossing off a whole avenue of exploration. Figuring out the rest of this is going to be so much easier now that we only have one way left to go. You know, I'm starting to like you. <laughs> no, don't bond because with he's him. he's blowing smoke up your ass. Yeah, exactly. Because he's being reasonable. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter who put that wall there because it's there. The only thing for you to do now is find the princess and, ideally, find your weapon while you're at it. With nowhere to go but forward, you turn back around, leaving the non-existent exit behind you. Oh, wow. How convenient for you. All right, let's uh, press the mirror. You cross the room, stopping just in front of the door to the basement. The handle is right there. Do feel free to give it a push as soon as you'd like. There is no door. There's a mirror. No, there isn't. Hmm. Now, this is tricky. My eyes say there's a mirror, but my brain says there isn't one. Look, if you need help, just raise your hand, and I'll guide it where it needs to go. Nah, we're reaching forward. You reach forward, your hand instinctively wrapping around the handle. It's gone. I'm just glad we can all agree on a shared reality. <laughs> And then you push the door open. Marvellous. We can proceed. It would seem that the stairs to the basement don't lead to a basement at all. Rather, they go up. They're draped in fine carpet too, one that feels pleasantly soft against your feet. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably... Mm, uh, no, it doesn't work here at all. <laughs> this place is nice. It's yeah, Fancy, even. it's very nice. I have to say, whatever you did in your previous lives, I deeply dislike how much it's thrown me off my rhythm. <laughs> Don't worry about it, boss. You're doing great. Why are they becoming friends? I'm not, oh but God. I appreciate the encouragement. Stop bonding with the well, narrator. if all of this has thrown you off your rhythm so much, then maybe we... don't have to slay the princess. No, you absolutely do. Just because she lives in a nice, exitless house doesn't mean that she doesn't pose a direct threat to all of reality. It's in her very nature. Her voice, gentle and warm, with an undercurrent of fatigue, rolls down the stairs. Fatigue? You're home. Dinner's ready. Oh my gosh, she's wife. As much as I desperately want to know what happened last time, we are not going to examine it. The more we think, the worse this gets. She's our wife now. Why are you so on edge? This is much nicer than what we're used to. I'd like to have dinner. Dinner sounds nice. Gotta say, I'm with him on this one, boss. When have nice things ever been a problem? That is the problem. This isn't supposed to be nice, and she's supposed to be a prisoner. I need to stop talking. I need to stop 
talking. Just go upstairs, okay? Yes, sir, Mr. President, sir. All right, so she's literally turned into a housewife. Interesting. This hall, oh. like the one below, is grand and beautiful. Torches uh, bathe the room in warm, comforting light. Uh, just enough to illuminate the tapestries along every wall. What is that? Woven with scenes of chivalry and courtship and romance. The many cloth eyes are fixed on each other, gazes averted from the long table in the center of the room. The princess, seated at its far end. Your pristine blade glints in the weak torchlight, hanging from a golden chain around the princess's neck. So that's where it is. And the tip is already pointed right at her heart. Okay, everything is falling back into place. All you have to do is cross the room, push down a little, and the entire world is saved. That's easy. Yeah, that is easy, isn't it? So, where's the rush? You're here. Now we can start being happy together. Why don't you sit down? Wouldn't that be nice? It would be. As the words leave her mouth, the torches flare and a chair swings in from behind, knocking your legs out from under you. You're forcibly seated at the head of the table. Isn't that better? It is better, right? Of course, my love. Alright. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you mentioned dinner on the stairs. I am hungry, my lady. Wait, actually, I'm gonna save. Saving is always the best option, guys. Don't ever forget that. Excuse me. Oh, right, dinner. I totally forgot about it. The flames burn bright and a shadow dives across the table in its wake. Wait, that's the smitten. Feast. That's the smitten. He's like obeying her. Go it ahead has and dig in. I'm sure you're hungry. I think that shadow is literally the smitten. Am He's I like ever? Her slave or something. Look at this spread. It's a feast fit for a king. Yeah, and after everything we've been through, we could use a break. More than that, we deserve a break. Uh, refuse your hospitality. I'm gonna eat that. You begin to feast, and the princess follows suit, her soft smile never fading. The food is more exquisite than you ever could have imagined. You sample countless otherworldly dishes, sauces and bread and hearty stews whose tastes dance across your tongue. You tear at hunks of meat practically melting from the bone, juicy and tender and bursting with flavors you could scarcely begin to describe. Your cup fills itself again and again with a flowery nectar so sweet it tastes like glimmering jewels. This really is perfect, isn't it? It is the best meal you've ever had. <laughs> My wife can cook. But then it's over. And you're just as hungry as when you began. Wasn't that perfect? We should do it again. The shadow washes across the table, clearing and replating. The feast is once again laid before you. The food is good. Again, you tear into golden crispy flesh Dab at the slurry of aromatic sauces on your plate with thick crusted bread. Sip your goblet of sparkling gems. But you've done this already. A good meal is still a good meal. And we didn't even have to clear the <laughs> dishes. I'm happy. Yes, sir. And then it's over. And you're just as hungry oh. as when you began. I didn't really like that noise. You're still hungry too, right? I know this wasn't as good as it was last time, but... We just have to do it again. That's all. It'll be perfect if we just do it again. Right, yeah. So the shadow sweeps over the table, clearing the old and laying out the new. And so you do it again. The meat is fine. The bread is fine. You sample the side dishes and they're fine too. You finish your goblet, the liquid within no longer glimmering on your palate, instead leaving your mouth coated in a tacky film. You put it down and it fills again. You do not drink more. Well, food is food, isn't it? Can't always be amazing. What matters is that we don't have to make it. Getting other people to do the hard work always improves the taste. Does it? Because it seems like the taste is getting worse. 
And we haven't had to so much as lift a finger. Regardless of quality, it's over again, and you're just as hungry as when you began. Again. No, no, something was wrong that time. But maybe I was just tasting it wrong. It looks just as good as it did the first time. It shouldn't taste like this. Again, the shadow replaces your feast. And again you eat. The meat is greasy. The bread is tough, its crust hurting your jaw as you chew. The grey vegetables are barely worth the effort of picking through. You don't even touch the goblet, its sickly sweet aroma utterly unappealing. I am so tired of eating. Well, it's still free food we didn't have to make, right? Oh, am I kidding? We were eating like kings and now we're eating like pigs. At least you still have the memory of how good it was the first time. Right? Why's the nerve? I'm so tired of this. As the oh. words leave her mouth, one of the torches on the wall sputters and then goes out entirely. Uh-oh. What just happened? D did I do something wrong? Not a fan of whatever just happened. Uh, I don't want to sit in the dark. Losers sit in the dark. <laughs> I want to sit in a brightly lit, spacious room where we can see our beautiful, queenly wife. Yes, sir. As if in response to the dousing of their brother, the other three torches blaze brighter, their flames licking at the walls. Their shadows deepen, dancing angrily across the stone. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a trip. What just happened? Did you make that torch go out? I didn't mean to. I promise. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. She's being defensive. And we all know being defensive is a sign of weakness. Um, uh, It's just a torch. Don't worry about it. We still have plenty of light. Yeah. Yeah. We just have to keep the rest lit. And everything will be okay. The princess's eyes dart to the floor. We should do something fun. Wouldn't that be nice? What if we played a game? Yes, I love games. I'm great at them. Yes, you are. Yeah, that's exactly what we should do. The flames roar and the shadow comes dancing across the table. It leaves behind an intricate game. Its pieces elegant and beautiful and enticing, its simple rules already apparent, even with little explanation. We can probably work together to figure this out as we go. That sounds like a lot of fun, right? Ah, <sighs> of course, my wife. Anything for you. I don't think oh, it really shoot. matters. This all kind of feels like we're just filling time, you know? I did not mean to skip well, that. You I'm don't sorry. Want to, win, <laughs> to show our prowess in all avenues and accumulate respect. Wow, you would be hopeless without me. Count your lucky stars I'm here. You and the princess do indeed figure it out as you go. And what a game it is. The tension between turns, the triumphant highs of moves well placed, and the tragic lows of miscalculations and careless plays. The warmth of trust and the cool texture of deception. And then, the climax, as she places her final piece Oh, I think we got the rules wrong. And so you start over. She only made us start over because we were winning. Time passes. Wow. You play the game. You win. Boom. And there you <laughs> have it. What did I tell you? Am I great at games or am I great at games? I'm great at games. Oh, you won. I guess we can play again. Wow, this is kind of depressing. Time passes. You play the game. She wins. Oh, I won. I guess we can play again. There is a long pause, and the board does not reset. This isn't fun anymore, is it? Oh, she's so sad. You don't need me to tell you that it isn't. 
princess visibly panics as another torch sputters. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe this is just too easy. Maybe if we added more rules and pieces, it would be fun again. Y yeah. The game's just a little simple. We can make it fun again. The shadow descends on the board once again. More pieces are added, their shapes more intricate, their purposes less immediately clear, and the two of you set about discovering the complexities of the game anew. And so you do. And it is fun again. In fact, it's almost as fun as the first time you played, and the sputtering torch roars back to life. But then you get used to the additions, and the feeling starts to fade. Creeping numbness settling in over the board. More pieces are added. The feelings flare. The feelings fade. The princess suggests new rules. A glimmer of what could have been excitement flits through your mind, quickly vanishing as the game progresses. Your pieces advance in an ever-increasing slog to their destination. Winning and losing become nothing but ends. And even the end becomes nothing as you roll over into a new game, the board resetting as many times as you can finish. Until finally... I'm out of ideas. I'm actually out of ideas this time. I... don't think I can play anymore. Oh. As the words leave the princess's oh, mouth, another torch goes out. We lost another Again, one. Again, the remaining flames burn brighter, and the shadow dances faster. I'm happy, I promise. We're both so, so happy here. You don't have to be upset. Oh, she's scared of me. This is awful. That's what I'm saying. Isn't it great that we're all having such a lovely time together? We just have to stay positive and realize how happy we are. Then all of those lights will stay on and keep showing us all the cool stuff we have. Yeah, sure. Alrighty. Um, yeah, are, are you actually happy here? The princess starts to hyperventilate, her quick breaths punctuating the uncomfortable silence between you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Mm, we need the truth. You need to tell me how you really feel. Feel anything. The third torch sputters out. The princess's shadow dances furiously against the far wall. There's just one left. What's going to happen when it goes out? Uh, probably not something good. It'll probably be very, very bad. As a matter of fact, that little shadow behind you is probably going to be very exciting. All right, my theory is that that's the voice of the smitten, and he's like obeying her right now and giving her some of our power or something, I'm not sure. Oh, that's an interesting one. Whatever the shadows have been showing us, it isn't real. We need to see what happens when the lights go out. We do, don't we? Oh, this is about to be really bad. I'm not really happy bad. here. I don't think I ever was. Oh. The princess sobs, burying her face in her hands as the final torch blows out. Oh, oh, this is bad. Wait, look at the background. Look at that one on the right. You can see, like, I think it's us and the princess. Yeah, that looks like the long quiet. Okay, um, I feel empty. She raises her head, mascara trailing down her cheeks. Me too. It feels like an important part of me is gone, but I'm still here. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how we're supposed to pick up the pieces. The princess's eyes dart to the floor. Well, we can't sit here forever. That part of us is over. The princess oh. pushes herself from her chair, and you instinctively do the same, waiting by the top of the stairs as she quietly crosses the room. Do you oh, wow. still care about me? Uh, of 
course I do. I don't think I'll ever stop. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm not sure I've ever had the chance to figure out how I feel about you. I just wanted to leave since the moment I found myself in the woods. No. <laughs> no, that is crazy. Hold up, I'm gonna save. Nah, saying no is crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. No. I guess neither of us really know what it means to care about each other. Do we? No, not really. Maybe we'll learn to, eventually, or well, maybe we won't. But either way, we aren't going to figure it out here. I think it's time to leave. Come on. Uh, I'm gonna offer you my hand. As the princess steps towards the stairs, you offer her your hand. The corners of her mouth curl into a demure smile and she gently takes your hand in hers. She's cold, a little clammy, but her skin against yours is the most real thing you have ever felt. You're uh -huh. offering surprisingly little resistance. If we leave the cabin, doesn't that end hey. the world? Hey, shut up, hero. Shut He's up. He's right, you know. You're giving us some real mixed signals, boss. <laughs> yes, well, I've seen my fairy tale ending, and I think there might be worse things than the end of the world. Wow. Well, this is less work for us anyways. Wow. Huh. Think what you will. I'm done fighting. Wow, we made the narrator depressed. You the princess don't exchange words as you descend the stairs to the cabin's entrance. And then the two of you step out into the world. I think this is the end of me. Even if it's not the end of you. I hope this was worth it. Genuinely, I do. The narrator's depressed. He's really gone. Oh shit. Isn't he? No boss anymore. Oh. No one left to tell us what to do. I guess we'll have to be our own boss then. About time. The stars are... so beautiful. Oh, uh, now she's about to get taken. A quiet moment passes over you. A comfortable quiet. We should dance. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> she gently pulls you forward, and then the two of you fall into a graceful step. The only rhythm that guides you is the shred thumping of your hearts, beating in perfect unison. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, no, nah, this is sweet. Her face, worn and tired, brightens the faster you move. A soft, sad smile widening and widening until it reflects only genuine affection. You send her out in a wide spin, and your arms stretch to their limits, only the tenuous grasp of your hand in hers holding you together. You share a gaze that feels like it lasts forever. Thank you for taking me here. This is nice. Even if it's a little cold outside. Oh no. Share a dance with your happy ending. I meant it. That was a good one. Oh, that one was so good. Alright, that one was really, really nice. Do you have any thoughts on this festival? This one is a songbird in a cage of gilded shadows. She will make for an honest heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally learned to sing for herself. Okay, cool. Huh. Nice. <laughs> nice cock. This route to me is about love. Love can be repetitive. It's fun at first, and it feels great in the beginning. Everything in the world feels amazing, but over time it dulls, and that feeling fades. But then you try something new and it's fun again. Of course, that fun only lasts so long. In the damsel portion of the route, the voice of the smin quite literally sees the princess as someone who only exists to make him happy and fulfill his needs. The smitten is willing to do anything that he thinks will make her happy, but he's unaware of what she actually wants. That feeling of love fading over time isn't love. Love is an understanding of what the other person wants for you two to both be happy. Love is a commitment that as long as you both support each other's needs, the feeling will last. It's a commitment between the highs and lows. To move on, you both have to accept this idea of love isn't working. She doesn't want to stay here. You have to make a compromise and both leave together. 
somewhere that will make both of you happy. My favorite part of this route was definitely getting to see the narrator depressed. I mean, my man's was going through it. Let me know what you guys thought about this route, and if there's anything I missed, just let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.